Good evening, everyone. Welcome to the Williamson County School Board meeting for May 16th. Uh, board members, since I traditionally forget this, I'd ask you to please record your attendance now so I don't forget it. Great. Thank you very much. Uh, first thing we'd have is the Pledge of Allegiance and Moment of Silence. And we have doing the Pledge of Allegiance tonight, Deputy Harold Reed and Deputy Jimmy Jimenez is with us tonight to lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much. Once again, we'd like to thank the Declaration Singers from Independence High School with Director Sidney Shadricks. We appreciate them being here. They did a great job. I'm sure everyone in the audience would agree how good they sound and how good all of our performing arts uh, students sound in our district, and we're very proud of them. Uh, we uh, have also the big reminder that there's only two days left of school. I can hear the cheers at home. Thank you. Um, and the first thing on our agenda is the approval of the agenda. And we'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda. Mm -hmm. We have a motion for Mr. Hullett. Second for Mr. Cash. Okay. Uh, we do it on. No. Okay. All in favor of the agenda, please signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed. Okay. It passes. Uh, when we approve the agenda, that also approves congenta, consent agenda items. We approve the April 18th school board meeting minutes. We approve the May 2nd special called school board meeting minutes. We approve the recommendations for field trip fee requests. We approve the e-plan applications and budgets for the fiscal year 2017 for federal projects to include ESEA, IDEA, IDEA preschool, IDEA discretionary grant, Title X McKinney Vento, Homeless Education Act, Carl D. Perkins Career Technical Education Act of 20, I mean of 2006, Carl Perkins Reserve Grant with Superintendent's authorizations. We also approved the Crockett Elementary School Pavilion, approved the Ravenwood High School Auxiliary Gym Divider, we approved the Refuge Church of Franklin Lease Agreement, we approved the Spring Station Middle School Storage Shed, and we approved the Summit High School Storage Shed. The next item on our agenda is items of particular public interest, public comment, and we have two speakers who would like to speak this evening. Uh, when you come up, if you'd please state your name and your address and what you'd like to talk about. And we have uh, three, we'll give you about three, four minutes to do that this evening, since we have two of you. First person is Daniela Coons. Good evening. My name is Daniela Kuntz. I live at 132 Cavalry Drive, Franklin, Tennessee 37064. And I'm speaking about gender bending chemicals and the parents requested um, safety guidelines for our students in schools. Everybody in the media and people are talking about the bathroom issue in schools and it has been so divisive. I'm glad that our district has taken the appropriate leadership and has been resourceful to make it work. You know me as the advocate who is trying to raise awareness to protect children from exposure to chemicals. What I only pointed to in a brief manner and did not elaborate fully in all these years is that many chemicals do have a direct influence on developing reproductive and hormonal systems, and many chemicals do also possess gender bending properties. Doctors present here in this room might have seen firsthand of such cases. Study case uh, is in, in the packet included. It is therefore and for sure also for all the other health dangers like asthma, MCS, cancer, brain damage, etc., which chemicals have shown to cause in children and in teachers too, 
why we as a community need to protect our children and women of chil uh, childbearing age from the exposure to chemicals. We owe it to our kids to provide for safe and toxin-free spaces to live, grow, play and learn wherever they are and to also protect the ones trying to teach our kids. We parents are here to remind you to put in place the safety guidelines we requested for many years and again so recently in our email of February 16, which copy is also in this packet. We have seen that low VOC, no VOC or zero VOC paint, for example, is not safe to be used around children. We don't want our children to be exposed again to those kind of substances. You have shown to be resourceful to accommodate students with gender-related problems. Now, we need to make sure that all students, no matter what gender they are or identify themselves with, will be protected from chemicals and fumes at school. I have included the drafts of the policies we suggested. Student health requires us to step up and we are asking of your full support in this of the superintendent of schools and the school board of Williamson County schools and to take action now. Thank you so much. Thank you. Our next speaker is Inetta Gaines. Good evening, Dr. Looney and school board members. My name is Inetta Gaines. My address is 6608 North Creekwood Drive in Brentwood, 37027. History is an important subject to study because for sure, if we don't learn from it, we may repeat it with devastating results. Learning from it requires truthful teaching. We are concerned about material that's in different textbooks and rightly so, yet we should also be just as concerned, if not more, about the field trips that our students take. They're supposed to be educational and accurate as much as possible. Today, the fourth grade students at Edmondson Elementary went on a field trip to the Hermitage. I purposefully decided not to allow my fourth grade granddaughter nor myself to attend. The material that is presented is not truthful. Just because something is popular doesn't make it right. Andrew Jackson was a slave owner, racist, and a traitor. I'm not trying to teach you history. We all know this. Is this my opinion? No, this is truthful history. But going to his plantation home is not going to teach that to fourth graders. 18 years ago, I went on an Edmondson field trip of the walking tour of Nashville with my fourth grade son. Several weeks ago, I went again on the same field trip with his niece, my fourth grade granddaughter, now also at Edmondson Elementary. Marilyn Switzer was the tour guide both times. She's a good historian with the exception of interjecting her opinion at times when truth is needed to be told. As we move from one statue to the next, she engaged the students with a story-like telling fashion. 18 years ago, when we came to the statue of Sam Davis, she tells of the story of him being caught by Union soldiers and hung for being a traitor. At this point, she adds opinion instead of fact. I was shocked 18 years ago and was shocked again several weeks ago. 18 years ago, due to my shock, I did not speak up. I decided that if she stated the same opinion this time, that I would speak. I politely begged her pardon and spoke so every fourth grader, teacher, and parent could hear me. I stated that as an African American, I took offense to her stating that he was a hero because he would not tell the Union soldiers who the traitors were, and thus he was hung. That may be her opinion, but it's not speaking truth. She also made the statement that it's always the right time to do the right thing. A student later in the tour asked her why Sam Davis chose to do that. Her answer was he wanted to save as many lives as he possibly could. However, the fact of the matter is if he really wanted to save as many lives as he possibly could, he would have told who the other traitors were and possibly saved thousands of lives, which would have included African American slaves as well. I guess their lives weren't that important to him. I emailed Ms. Switzer to give her an opportunity to address this issue first. She has not replied yet, and therefore I stand before you today and ask that the Williamson County School Board <coughs> give serious consideration before field trips that are offensive and untruthful be approved, in particular the walking tour of Nashville and the Hermitage, which do not portray an accurate picture of history and are offensive. 
In closing, I would like to say that I'm very surprised and I'm very disappointed that to my knowledge for 18 years or more, that no fourth grade teacher who has gone on this tour more than once has not spoken about this fact. The Edmondson newspaper, the EES News Flash, is promoting Ms. Switzer in her article in which she declares, and I quote, my favorite story to tell is Sam Davis, and I love doing the walking tour, end quote. This is the Edmondson newspaper, picture of her with some students. Educators and historians should speak truth when it comes to telling history. If they want to interject their opinion, they should make it perfectly clear that what they are speaking is opinion and not fact. Thank you very much. Thank you, Ms. Gaines. Dr. Burgos, I had on the board here that you had pushed your button. Did you push that or is it left over from a previous meeting? Must have been my phone. Okay, thank you. Okay, next item on our agenda is communications to the board, superintendent's report, Dr. Looney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Things are going well in the district. As you know, uh, we have graduations. We have sent you an email inviting you to the various graduations. I will say we have a number of graduations that are scheduled to be outside and um, in our football stadiums. If you've been paying attention to the weather forecast, there is a call for um, some wet precipitation, not in the form of snow. Uh, but so we are watching the weather carefully and we'll have a backup plan for those situations. Other than that, things are going well in the district. I will say that I was on a call, conference call with the Commissioner of Education today and they, the state has selected a vendor to score the uh, TN ready end of course in um, the end of course exams and it is Pearson. So Pearson will be scoring those exams. We will be receiving the shipping labels within the next couple of days and shipping those off. That completes my report. Now I'm gonna turn it over to Mrs. Carol Birdsong who wants to spotlight some fantastic individuals. Thank you. We have uh, several students and some staff members to celebrate tonight. We are going to start with the National Academy of Television Arts and Sciences and those that's the group that produces the Emmy Awards and every year it's so exciting to see how many how many trophies we can bring home <laughs> we compete um, against all students in Tennessee North Carolina and Alabama and I'm proud to say that Williamson County School students brought home 11 of 15 awards not bad we will start with Brentwood High School and they won for the best newscast. This is Andrew Fisher, Caitlin Alexander, Ben Sherrill, Caleb Howard, Timmy Derryberry, Reed Smith, Abby Williams, Rosie Gunger, Kira Lee, and Emma Richards. Brentwood also won for best public service announcement. Their teacher is Ronnie Adcock, Ben Sherrill, Matthew Willoughby, and Jake Fisher. Franklin High School won several awards. This is Peter Newsom. Peter won for News Story. They also won in the category of Fiction. Christian Whittemore, Tyler Parrish, Andrew Kachamba, Naya Retta, Sydney Hampton, McKenna Martin, Shell Warren, Caitlin McFadden, Hope Dyra, and Connor Wood. Franklin also won in the category of Best Director. Andrew Kachamba and Hope Dyra again. And also Franklin won. This is McKenna Martin in the area of Best Writer. Their teacher is Carrie Thompson. Independence brought home a statue. This is Morgan Searles, Ocean Goins, Julia Schaefer, and Zach Fulkerson. They won in Public Affairs Community Service. There was a tie between two of our schools in the category of sports. This is Zach Fulkerson of Independence High School, and this is Jackson Wright from Page High School. They tied for best sports. The Page High School teacher is Terry Flowers. The Independence teacher is Matt Balzer. This, uh, from Ravenwood High School, three awards. This is Mitch Mullins. Mitch brought home two trophies, one for photographer and the other for animation graphics. Ravenwood also won in the category of arts and entertainment. This is Chad Tetzloff, Cheyenne Smith, and Allie Newsom. Their teacher is Shane Shoemake. Now on to Skills USA State Leadership and Skills Conference. First place, 
State Award in Advertising and Design from Franklin High School. This is Samantha Faber. Her teacher is Melissa Estes. In video production, Peter Newsom and Tyler Parrish. Teacher again, Carrie Thompson from Franklin High School. Also in the skills competition from Independence High School, this is Olivia Bates. She won in photography and Stephanie Pruitt is her teacher. And then we go to forensics and this is really speech and debate, but it's called Forensics, National Forensics League, Tennessee Champion, Congressional Debate, House One, Shresh Kumar, Harriet Medlin is Shresh's teacher, also Samuel Dowd, one for Congressional Debate, House Two, both Brentwood High School students. We have the outstanding JROTC Cadet of the Year from Franklin High School. This is Allison Seagard, Greg Hoover, is her teacher. In the area of the arts, our Congressional Art Award winner from Brentwood High School is Allison Connor. Her teacher is Heather McHugh. We have some middle school students who are also being honored tonight. They, they are from Fairview Middle School from the Tennessee Technology Student Association competition in the area of children's stories. Alexis Miniot, Allison Swafford, and Josh Cox and in technology, technology essays, uh, Alex won again. Fairview Middle School, their teacher is Cyril Reynolds. And I'm always excited when we have the opportunity to honor elementary students, and those are few and far between because there aren't that many state competitions. But this young lady from Edmondson Elementary School, Jatani Rao, is being honored twice tonight. She won the Tennessee Department of Transportation's Aeronautics Division Aviation Art Award the second year in a row, I might add. Her teacher is Elizabeth Purcell. She also is being honored tonight for first place in the National Academy of Engineering Engineer Girl Essay Contest for grades three through five. In staff spotlights, this is Annette Kuykendall, from Fairview Middle School. She is being presented here with the Louise Meredith School Library Media Award. And then last but certainly not least, Dr. Lee Webb, principal of Centennial High School, who was awarded the Field Award for Excellence in Tennessee Secondary School Leadership. Congratulations to all of our students and staff members. Chairman, that completes my report. Thank you, Dr. Looney. On the chairman's report, again, I just want to remind you about all the high school graduations that are coming up this weekend, starting on Friday, running through Sunday. Um, you can go and look in the In Focus uh, newsletter online and see where all they are, what time, and, and locations. The other item is Thursday night is the Wilco Awards at the factory. That's the awards for our athletic uh, teams and individuals who achieved this year and it's uh, my understanding is last year was an awesome event for the first year so I'm expecting to be nothing less than awesome plus this year and that again is this Thursday night uh, Mr. Cash has asked for a point of privilege to make comments about the meeting Thursday night Mr. Cash yeah, I just wanted to comment on the Summit High School coming out and making a presentation on their engineering program. And I'd like to just thank Mrs. Lamb and uh, Mrs. Snyder and uh, Gavin and Matt for coming out and making a great presentation. What really impressed me was one of the board members asked the boys what, uh, how this curriculum changed their life. And Gavin said that he was basically clueless as to what he wanted to do in the future until he got into the engineering program with training and hands-on experience. He now has a passion for engineering. Matt said he was instructed to draw up a, uh, a piece of work in AutoCAD. And he said he played with it and put his dimensions in, punched it in, and hit print. 
And when the 3D printer printed out his piece exactly to the dimensions, he said he was sold. I just want to say that it's book work that gets so many kids where they're at, but the hands-on experience is so important. And I can't, I can't thank Dr. Allen, Director of uh, Technical Training, for his vision for our schools. We spoke about eighth graders from Spring Station being tracked and spotted by teachers and counselors and put into these positions to where they're getting them in curriculums that are waking them up and giving them a passion for what they want to do in the future. These programs are so important to our schools. The, the uh, Megatronics going in at Fairview, the, uh, the Ag programs, the Culinary Art programs, Auto King, I mean, uh, that's just a few. And I would just like to say tonight, this is a testament to what Williamson County Schools offers each and every student, no matter where you're at, you've got teachers and principals supporting these children and trying to get them focused in on something that they want to do in their life so that they can follow their dreams. And I just thank each and every administrator, again, Dr. Allen, who I've worked with, and every principal and teacher in Williamson County for doing an outstanding job, and I'd like to applaud them right now. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you, Mr. Cash. Appreciate your comments. Uh, next item is we don't have any unfinished business, but we're moving on to new business. First item is board policy, first reading 4.6041, testing for credit. Dr. Looney. Mr. Chairman, board members, I recommend approval. I submitted this as first reading. Okay, recommend, recommendation from the director. Anyone like to make a motion for this? Motion for Mr. Hullett. Second by Ms. McGraw. Any discussions, comments? I see none. If we're ready to vote then, if you'd go ahead and record your votes. Your vote is 12 yes, zero no. Thank you. Our next item is board policy for first reading 4.6051, credit requirements for graduation, Dr. Looney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Board members, I do recommend approval as submitted. Okay, we have a recommendation from the director. Who would like to make a motion for this policy? Dr. Burgos made motion. Second by Ms. Emerson. Any comments or discussions on this policy? Okay, I see none. If you go ahead and record your votes then, please. Your vote is 12 yes, zero no. Thank you, thank you, board. Next item is high school course list for 2016-2017, Dr. Looney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. These are potential classes that we will offer. We have to submit a list of all the potential classes that Williamson County Schools will offer for next year to the Department of Education for consideration. I do ask that you approve this list. Anyone like to make a motion for the high school course list? We have, we have a motion from Mr. Wimberly, second by Mr. Hullett. Any discussions, comments? Okay, I see none. If you go ahead and record your votes then on the course list. Your vote is 12 yes, zero no. Thank you, board. The next item is item D, 2015-16 school board budget resolution on salaries transfers. Dr. Looney. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, board members. As you can see, there's a need to make some salary adjustments in order to um, make all the lines in the budget work appropriately. Uh, I do recommend your approval for a total of $304,925. Okay, we have the director's recommendation. Anyone like to make a motion on this? We have a motion from Mr. Cash, second by Mr. Peterson. 
Any further discussion on this policy? Uh, I'm sorry, on this resolution. Mr. Wimberly. Dr. Luna, you said we were making salary adjustments. We're not actually changing people's compensation through this vote, are we? No, sir. I apologize. It should have been more clear. Um, every year we have to make adjustments within line items to make sure that the budget in each line item balances. And so this allows us to do that. But nobody's compensation is being altered. Is that correct, Mrs. Holman? Thank you. Okay, any other comments, questions? Okay, I see none. We have a motion and a second. We're ready to vote. If you would then go ahead and record your votes. Your vote is 12 yes, zero no. Thank you, board. Next item under new business is E, proposed settlement of pending lawsuit. Dr. Looney. Mr. Chairman, I do recommend approval. Okay. Anyone like to make a motion for approval? Uh, Mr. Mr. Hull, would you like to make a motion for approval? Yes, sir. We have a motion. A second. Second. Second from Ms. McGraw. And Mr. Hullett. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I'd also like to make an amendment to this motion that we reconsider the settlement with the only thing changed to the settlement offer being the amount and changing that amount to $35,000, please. Thirty-six five. My 30, apologies. Thirty-six thousand five hundred dollars. Thirty-six thousand five hundred dollars on the settlement. All right. That's uh, a motion for an amendment to the to it. Anyone like to second that? Second from Mr. Wimberly. Okay. Comments or discussion on the amendment, Mr. Mazzara. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd actually like to speak to the to the motion at hand, not the amendment. Well, it, procedurally, uh, I know he just you just want to wait. Until I requested to speak prior to the amendment being offered. Okay. So he'll, he'll remain in the queue uh, at, until after a vote on the amendment. Okay. Uh, the attorney has said to wait in, until after. The I know that. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Any other discussion specifically about the amendment? Okay, I see none. Then we'll be make a, uh, if you go ahead then and record your votes on the amended <coughs> amendment to the motion, to the resolution, I'm sorry. Your vote is 11 yes, one no. Okay, so we have on the floor then an amended resolution. And Mr. Chair, if I may, just to make sure that the board is, is clear on this, the proposal uh, was actually a higher number than that. So this actually constitutes a counter offer uh, to, uh, to what was brought to the board originally. Okay, Mr. Mesro. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, I could speak to the parliamentary procedure of how this came about, um, this motion. I believe that it, it should have been brought forward for reconsideration by one of the voters in the prevailing majority, but there was none, so I'm not sure how that works. But nonetheless, um, when I last voted on this matter, I had stated that I was voting no based on principle. I think it's funny how life presents us opportunities to test our words and convictions. I would imagine that if I were to change my vote for an additional savings of 13500 then I really didn't vote based on principle. Principles should not be swayed by money, whether a little or a lot. So I'll be voting no again based on principle. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. Ms. Curley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. We're usually kept in the dark regarding lawsuits 
brought against the district. As a board, we have not historically been briefed on the details of legal matters, much less threatened litigation against the district. As a board, we have historically not voted on settlements. Although there have been suits brought against the board, it seems there has been an intentional effort to make public only those that can be twisted for political purposes. Although we have a policy and code of ethics prohibiting political activity, the board has knowingly turned a blind eye to rampant political activity that has been divisive, disruptive, and ultimately cost the taxpayers and children of this community. Now there are two well-documented instances where the actions, events, and circumstances leading to litigation have been willfully and intentionally misrepresented not only to the board, but to the public. This has been one of those cases. Information was knowingly and willfully misrepresented to the board after the district was contacted by a news agency. As a Brentwood homepage stated, after it became apparent that news of a student fight was going to become public, our superintendent of schools sent an email to board members. There was knowledge this event was going to be televised and it would possibly look negative on the way the administration in the district handled a particular incident. It's my opinion that a scapegoat was sought. In my opinion, the initial email to the board was not in good faith, as there was information that was intentionally and willfully excluded. My comments were projected in a false and misleading light and how they may or may not have contributed to a parent going to media. In my opinion, negotiations and mediation have not been conducted in good faith, as there has been an intentional effort to assign blame and assess monetary damages without proper adjudication. One person cannot play accuser, judge, jury, and executioner without violating someone's civil rights and liberties. In an affidavit, a parent recounted a meeting that took place on February the 24th. And the parent stated, despite my repeated correction of the actual facts to Dr. Looney, he persisted in his statements and position that Mrs. Curley had violated the law by her comments in my Facebook post, and I had violated the law by releasing the video footage to the media, and that by Ms. Curley's actions and my own, that litigation would ensue. Were similar comments made to the claimants, and thereby encouraging potential litigation and a settlement that is before us tonight. To date, legal, represent, legal representation that I have obtained to represent my interest has been ignored, dismissed, undermined, and excluded. Perhaps that is because I am not technically a party to this because a lawsuit has not been filed. Or perhaps it is because <coughs> what could have been brought forth did not fit a politically charged narrative. Again, one person cannot play accuser, judge, jury, and executioner. Strongly believe that this matter is not coming before us tonight to mitigate cost to this district, but for political purposes and to be used for political fodder in an election year. To date, no legal action has been filed. No jury or judge has decided guilt or innocence. No legal body with statutory authority has determined if damages have in fact occurred or should be assessed or awarded. Setting a precedent for settling threatened lawsuits may encourage others to do the same and expect a settlement in return. Most dangerous and reckless is allowing someone to assign guilt or innocence and use the court of public opinion. By making this a public spectacle, that precedent is being set. We should all expect that anyone who dares to question or raise concerns to fall under the same circumstances and be subjected to the same kangaroo-style court antics. If tonight's agreement 
is to settle without casting blame and to truly hold no one harmless, then no individual should be mentioned by name. As mentioning someone by name only proves the political nature in which all of this has transpired. If there is no blame to be cast, then I move to amend the settlement by striking the second and third sentences from the opening paragraph in the settlement agreement. Okay, are you, you then are offering the, to remove, I think you said the second and third sentences, is that correct? Yes. Okay, so that's your motion? That's my motion. Okay, a motion for an amendment to remove the second and third sentences. <laughs> Anyone like to second that? Emerson to second the motion. Any comments, discussions? Mr. Gregory. I don't have this thing memorized, so I don't have any idea what those sentences say. The county attorney is present. Uh, if, if the board wishes to look at that proposal, uh, then my recommendation would be that you recess for that purpose. If that if that is something that the board as a whole desires, that document um, per uh, the uh, the state's open records council is still privileged because it's attorney work product um, that that the county attorney was involved in creating, so uh, it it it's not a public record at this point. Okay, Mr. Gregory, are you wanting us to have time for you to read through the second and third sentence? I can either abstain or we can recess. I'm perfectly comfortable abstaining on it. Board members, would you like to recess to read through it to refresh your memories of this or not? Mr. Mesra? Mr. Chairman, thank you. I think that um, if any of the board members feels uncomfortable with the uh, information that's being presented, and that they're not adequately adequately informed, then I think it's incumbent upon us to recess for that individual so that they can make an informed decision. So if I may, procedurally, um, uh, the motion to recess would take a motion to second and it's not debatable. Okay, there are some people who have, who have chimed in. Should we call on them to speak before we take um, a There's motion, a motion to second? Well, at the, if, if, at the moment, Mr. Mesra has the floor so uh, that if, if because the, the nature of a motion to recess is a motion in a second, if, if before he yields the floor, uh, he makes a motion, then the others may not have that opportunity prior to that particular vote. Mr. Mesra, are you wanting to make a motion then? Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'd like to make a motion to recess for two minutes. Okay. Speed reader. You better read fast. <laughs> All right. Uh, anyone like to second that? I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Doctor. I didn't hear you. Okay. Then, as as uh, Mr. Golden said, it's not debatable. If we go ahead and can you set up a vote? Or we need to do this by voice or. So there has to, but to regards a motion to second and a vote, oh, a non-debatable vote. Voice. 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 We go around and call call the roll on this one. Take a roll roll call vote. Kenneth Peterson. No. Jane Cass. Yes. T.J. Mazzara? Yes. Ann McGraw? Yes. Gary Anderson? Yes. Gabe J. Galbraith? Yes. Robert Tullett? No. Andy Emerson? Yes. Rick Wimberly? Yes. Ed Burgo? Yes. Mark Gregory? Yes. Susan Curley? Yes. Okay. Take a recess. And Mr. Mesmer said two minutes. So my, <laughs> uh, what I suggest to you as board members is go out that back door, take a right into the to the larger room, and uh, um, move quickly. I don't need to go.
right, everybody back? Yeah. All right, we'll go back into the meeting, and we're still on the discussion about the amendment to remove the second and third sentence out of the document. Uh, Mr. Peterson, you are next. Don't worry about it. You're fine? Okay. Anyone else like to comment on this? All right, Mr. Golden, and we are voting on this uh, amendment to remove the second and third sentence. And that's the only thing we're voting on right now. Is that correct? That's correct. And just and uh, Mr. Mesra and I had a had a short discussion during the recess, and I, and he had asked a question while the board was in session regarding the question of a motion to reconsider. There were actually, as you all may recall, two separate proposals that were brought to you. Uh, the the first one was voted on a month or so ago. The second proposal is 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 what's on the agenda, and that has different language from the first proposal. Okay. Any follow up after Mr. Golden's comments? Okay, I see none. Then, if we'd uh, go ahead and record our votes at this time for just removing the second and third sentence out of the document. Your vote is three yes, nine no. Okay, so then we are we are then back on the amended motion, which the change is the uh, proposed settlement as amended to thirty six thousand five hundred dollars. So that is where we are right now. Any further discussion on that? Okay. I see none. We'd go ahead and record our votes. Your vote is 10 yes, 2 no. Okay. And we have passed the amended proposed settlement pending lawsuit. Uh, at this point, Mr. Peterson asked for a point of privilege. Um, Mr. Peterson, to your floor. <clears throat> Thank you very much. Um, I just wanted to uh, quickly speak about the, uh, us being a school board, wanted to speak about one of our, um, one of our best who passed away on Wednesday night um, from cancer. She'd been battling since 2014. Miss Wilmore was a uh, incredible science teacher at Fairview High School for 12 years. Um, spent the last two years fighting, battling cancer and uh, was a true inspiration to our students and the uh, faculty and administration of Fairview High School. And I just really wanted to make sure that everyone was aware of her. Uh, she has a memorial on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. at the high school. Um, her, her thoughts and uh, my thoughts and prayers, I hope as well as the boards, is with her family and those that uh, are sur her, surrounded by her friends. Um, her words were, where there's a will more, there's a way. And she said, she spoke those uh, in a serious nature and did her very best to ensure that the students at Fairview were successful and I just really wanted to uh, say thank you to her and, uh, and to her family and I uh, wish all of you the very best um, as this will be my last meeting but thank you so much. Thank you Mr. Peterson. Dr. Looney you wanted to make a comment? Yes sir I, I feel obligated to, to make a comment tonight after um, the comments that were made tonight and, and so um, I, I feel like I have an obligation to protect my good name and character. Um, the reality of it is, is um, we have been placed in an unfortunate position as it relates to a legal matter. And um, right is right and wrong is wrong. And, and I, I will tell you that um, I hope that this board is getting to a place uh, where we can focus on the business at hand rather than throwing rocks at one another. and encouraging people to go to the media outside of board policy whether the, that particular parent intended to go or not is really not the point the point is mrs curley you advise somebody to go to the public outside of the process that we have established and agreed upon um, and the email that has become um, the, at the bait was only sent to board members it, I, I, it could have very easily been solved had you attested to the fact that you didn't send that email and so you know, the truth of it is, is I, I honestly believe I've acted in good faith, and I'm sorry that we're here and have cost of the taxpayers' money. Okay. Mr. 
Shirley, you wanted to follow up on that? Yes, sir. I think it's interesting that you would take that stance, Dr. Looney, um, when you knew full well that the parent had in fact followed the chain of command. The parent had notified you. She has a sworn affidavit that says she had met with you four days prior and that you had full knowledge of her expectations to go to the media. The way that email was portrayed to the board, it omitted the whole gravity of that parent's post, what she had conveyed, the numerous others who had commented on it. If people are to stop throwing rocks, Dr. Looney, I believe that also starts with you. You have made me a target. I have asked you repeatedly to stop. My expectation is that you too will follow the superintendent's code of ethics that has been authorized and it's recommended by TSBA. In my understanding, it was also developed by TOS. I've tried repeatedly to get it on this agenda. And that request has been repeatedly denied. I would hope that you would treat board members equally and you would refrain from interfering in elections. If the politically charged nature of this board is to stop, it begins and ends with you. Okay, I believe that's all we have. The meeting is adjourned.